Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lance from Cinematic Galaxy here today. And today I'm going to be reviewing Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I'm very sorry for the delay with posting this video, but it's finally here. It was released 19 years after Last Crusade. So many people were excited for it. And uh, me, myself, I, I just watched all three indie films, love them all. So I was really excited for this one. How did I feel about it? I was actually very disappointed initially and considering that this film has been out for three years and most people who have wanted to see this film have already seen it, um, there are going to be spoilers in this review. Basically, the biggest reason I was disappointed with this at the time was the fact that it had aliens in it. I did not want an Indiana Jones film to have aliens in it at all. But over the past year, I actually got interested to rewatch this film because uh, particularly my favorite YouTube uh, critic, Chris Duckman, he said that he felt this film was very underrated. So I thought about it and I was like, you know what, I need to check it out again because I don't remember it being that bad. Um, and actually I didn't hate it, it just left me feeling very empty. Anyway, as you can see, I, I just went out and bought it and you know, I just decided to watch it and see what I felt about it. It was the first time I watched it since it came out and um, I liked it. <laughs> the film takes place in the year 1957, uh, around the Cold War. I thought this was a good, fun, entertaining film. You know, I, I really loved Harrison Ford again as Indiana Jones. I thought it was great. Um, it was great seeing Marion back. And I actually did like Shia LaBeouf's character. I, I thought he was fine. I actually liked the story this time around. And now that I'm older, I understand how aliens connect to this time period and how they actually connect to history, so I don't mind at all that, that this film had aliens because, I mean, it makes sense. Indiana Jones has never been about realism. Overall, the action was well shot. John Williams' score was once again very good. Uh, his score was very mysterious. It really brought a sort of weird sci-fi twist to it that was good. One of the issues I have with this film uh, relates to some of the supporting cast, or, or supporting characters more like. For instance, uh, the villain, Kate Blanchett as Arena Spalco. I really liked her performance. I, I liked what they were doing with the character, but I don't feel like they gave her character enough uh, interesting stuff to do. I, I, you know, she was psychic and all that. She had that weird psychic, uh, psychic thing going on that I actually really liked, but you never really see her put that to use. You never see her, you know, all the other villains, at some point they really get under Indiana Jones' skin. You never see that with Arena Spalco. She just, she pops up and she talks to him every now and then, but she never really threatens him, and, and I don't like that. The other characters that I have an issue with are Harold Oxley, played by John Hurt, and uh, especially that character Mac, played by... Uh... But anyway, yeah, um, the character Oxley, you know, all he does is just go around muttering about the skull and just saying the stupidest stuff and I mean yeah I understand why he's there I don't hate him but his character's just kinda iffy for me you know he just kinda got he just got tired of seeing him walking around with that clueless look on his face but then Mac uh, he's always switching sides and you know changing allegiances and you just never really know what side he's on but it, it gets really tiring it's never really interesting another uh, big flaw I have with this film is that Indy's never really in real danger in this film. The one scene, and this is a very controversial scene, but I actually like it. The scene where he survives the atomic blasts by getting in the refrigerator, I thought that was fun, and I was legitimately scared for his life before he got in there. I was like, how in the world is he gonna survive this? But other than that, you never really see him in danger in the film. The great thing about all the other ones is that there are always those moments where you don't know how he's gonna make it out. But in this film, it's just easy for him. And uh, that took a lot of the suspense and a lot of the, the fun out of it. And probably my biggest flaw with this film, way, way too much CGI. Man, the CGI is way overdone in this film. 
One of the great things about the old ones is that they use a lot of practical effects and a lot of, you know, good stunts. You know, they didn't have all this green screen, computerized mess. And, and this film, I mean, they're CG gophers, for crying out loud. Like, what, what the heck? Seriously? The thing I like the most about it, it doesn't really get a lot of mention. But I think this film overall has a good heart. Um, and the fact that Indy marries his, his old love, Marion, who's always really been the woman for him. And he connects with his son played by Shia LaBeouf. So, I liked that. I thought it was a very good ending. All in all, I'd actually say that Crystal Skull is neck and neck with Temple of Doom um, as far as how much I like them. I guess if I really had to pick, I'd say I might like Temple of Doom a little more. Both of them have flaws that kind of, you know, make them definitely my least favorites out of the series, but they're still a lot of fun. I'm gonna give Kingdom of the Crystal Skull a B. You know, it's it's good, and it's a fun film. Um, I think it's a little overhated, honestly. I, I find it to be better than the Star Wars prequels. I mean, it's one of those sequels that it wasn't necessary at all. Um, you know, it's not like a Toy Story 3 or, or, or something where you just look at it and go, wow, you know, I'm so glad they made that. No, it's like, it's a film that could easily have not been there, and people would still love this series tremendously. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this review. Uh, please just let me know what you thought in the comments. Do you feel that this film is overhated, or do you hate it just as much as most people do? And uh, anyway, just uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, stay tuned for my next few reviews. And this is Lance from Cinematic Galaxy, signing off.